This is Eitan Erkowitz at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. The UK government is poised to invoke Article 50 in March to end its membership in the European Union, a move that is expected to have major ramifications on the UK and on the City of London itself. Joining me is Simeon Jankov, Senior Fellow at the Institute and former Finance Minister of Bulgaria. Thank you for joining me, Simeon. Thank you very much. So you recently came out with a paper on the effect Brexit, the British exit from the European Union, will have on the City of London and on the UK itself. So what are some of your findings? Indeed, this is a topic hotly debated uh, um, among uh, economists and among politicians. Um, and these are the first set of uh, numbers that suggest that Brexit is likely to ha have quite a significant, even short-term effect. Uh, what we estimate is that uh, revenues in the City of London, the financial capital um, of the European Union currently, will fall between 12 and 18 percent almost immediately. And uh, jobs uh, will also be lost. About 7 to 8 percent of current employment in the city will also go to other parts of Europe and indeed the United States. So is this just in the financial sector or are there other sectors that will also be adversely affected? Uh, there will be other sectors that will also be adversely related. We start looking at the financial sector, but then our uh, study goes beyond that and says, well, for finance to, um, to, to work, you also have lawyers that need to sign up contracts, you have accountants that uh, work on uh, uh, deals, you have real estate uh, maintenance and so on. So we also look at these additional effects, and basically once you look at these uh, auxiliary sectors, the loss in employment about double, so it goes from 7 to 8 percent um, of current employment to about 15 percent, which is a considerable effect. So you also argue against uh, the UK deregulating its financial sector, so why, why do you argue against that? Well, one of the common uh, comments by current uh, British politicians is, well, we'll lose uh, the European Union market, but we'll also lose our chains of EU regulation of financial services. And that would allow us to deregulate our uh, financial sector and attract business from the Middle East, from uh, Asia. The reason that this is uh, quite dangerous uh, as a proposition is that, of course, if uh, London or Britain were to do that, well, then there will be a response, certainly from the U.S. government, from, um, from New York, perhaps from some Asian um, financial centers. And suddenly, the type of financial regulation that we currently have will be undermined. And everybody will be losing out of that. So how should the U.K. approach its negotiations with the EU? Currently, both sides, not just the British politicians, but also European Union politicians, have been, uh, let's say, not very constructive about, uh, about uh, negotiations, and rather finger-pointing has been uh, kind of the flavor of, uh, of the month. Uh, but also there is uh, expectation that once the actual Article 50 is uh, invoked later this month, the UK government has a clear negotiation tactics. We're yet to see whether that's the case and whether after this announcement there will be a lot more constructive about the steps that need to be taken. Both sides need to be constructive. Otherwise, if London's financial sector were to shrink, so will the opportunity for other European firms to get access to finance. So there's also going to be major um, elections coming up in the EU, specifically in France and Germany. Is that going to affect the timeline of Brexit? I think it will affect the timeline. In my time as finance minister, we were always waiting f when a major decision needed to be taken by Brussels for the major elections. And we now have certainly France and Germany, as you uh, mentioned. Uh, we have uh, elections in the Netherlands later this uh, month, the possibility of Italian elections later in uh, the year. So all of this has to be taken into account. What does it mean? It means that even if the British government has kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, process in mind, uh, European politics may undermine that process and the UK government his needs to be a lot more flexible than it currently thinks it needs to be. Thank you, Simeon. Thank you very much, Aiton.